Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. And today we'll be continuing our discussion on psychology and health disparities by discussing HIV and AIDS. And before we begin, I want to briefly kind of review the homework, but also test everyone's pre previous knowledge about what we know about the HIV and AIDS epidemic and the uh, virus itself. So pull up Poll Everywhere and log in. And I'm going to launch the first question. The first question is, people do not get HIV AIDS from using swimming pools or restrooms after someone with HIV AIDS does. So take a second and log in your answer. Great job. So it seems that the majority of the class believes that this statement is actually true. Can somebody who picked true tell me why? Mm -hmm. Good point. As Sydney pointed out, um, HIV is transmitted through sexual contact. What if someone who um, picked false? Mm -hmm. Yes, as Benjamin pointed out, um, there is a possibility that blood could be exposed and that does play a role in HIV transmission. The correct answer is true. People do not actually get HIV AIDS from using swimming pools or restrooms after someone with HIV AIDS does. And you'll see why that's a, a relevant statement to actually test our knowledge on a little bit later. The next poll of your question is, HIV AIDS can now be prevented with a vaccine and cured if treated early. Take a second, log in your answers. All right, it seems that the majority of the class believes that this is also true. Can somebody who picked true tell me why? Awesome, as Laura pointed out, PrEP does exist, and PrEP does um, has been shown to be 99.9% .9 depending on how you take it effective against um, HIV. Someone who picked false. Great point. So the actual answer is false. Um, although PrEP can protect you against getting HIV, there is no vaccine for HIV AIDS, and it cannot actually be cured if you actually do um, acquire HIV. As we all know from your homework, HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, and it causes the development of AIDS, which is the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, in which your immune system loses effectiveness. Now let's take a little bit of a road trip through time and see the progression of the HIV AIDS epidemic throughout the United States. Campbell of San Francisco and Billy Walker of New York both suffer from a mysterious. Take a second and kind of um, process everything that you've just seen, and I'm curious to know folks' reaction. New things that you never knew of before. New questions that may have emerged. All great points. So as it was highlighted in the video, AIDS was first recognized in 19. 81 and is still the leading cause of death in Africa. There are currently over 40 million people um, infected with HIV AIDS with over 2 million new cases per year. There's currently no cure, but there are different medications that help to extend lives for those who do live with HIV AIDS. Some of the first symptom, symptoms of HIV um, are flu-like symptoms such as a fever, sore throat, skin rash, and headache. But during this time, your immune system is being damaged, and CD4 count cells actually fall. And once um, your CD4 count cells fall to a certain degree, you have now developed AIDS, which during this time, um, damage to organs can occur, as well as weight loss, fatigue, etc. And going back to how HIV is transmitted, um, as it was highlighted earlier, it can be transmitted person to person during sex, through direct contact with blood, injection drug use, so sharing needles um, for those uh, for the use of heroin, for example, is one population that's affected. Um, and even mother to child mother to child during pregnancy, birth, or breastfeeding. Take a look at the CDC report from 2007. As you can see here, this is the incidence of HIV AIDS diagnosis by race and ethnicity. What do you notice? Great points. African Americans are um, more likely to be diagnosed with HIV AIDS, followed by Hispanics. What about the HIV AIDS rates by age group? Take a second to look at this. Mm -hmm. Great points. We can see here that those between the ages of 25 and 44 have um, a 
higher prevalence of being diagnosed with HIV and AIDS. Can someone tell me why this may be? Yes, it could be more um, casual sex partners during this age period, um, which could also explain why we see that the incidence kind of dies off as you get older because you may be more likely to be married or in a monogamous relationship or engaged in less sex overall, um, which is a not which is a good thing for some people. <laughs> so this highlights some socio-demographic factors such as African Americans um, are disproportionately affected by HIV AIDS and younger individuals are more likely to acquire HIV. In thinking about these disparities in risk, we know that black and Latino men have um, a higher risk of acquiring HIV. And this isn't due to differences in drug use or risky sexual behavior, as research shows that black, Latino, and white men also all engage in this about the same rate of drug use um, and risky sexual behaviors. But that these factors can be traced back to structural causes such as residential segregation, which puts black and Latino populations higher concentration areas of HIV, as well as individual factors such as how the stigma that's associated with being a black and Latino man kind of intersects with what it means to be um, a gay or um, bisexual man and how this may cause these men to actually have more unprotected sex with casual partners. In highlighting the effect of an HIV diagnosis, I'd like to share P's story. P remarked, I got married when I was about 20 years old, and we had a baby. We wanted to have another baby, and I made this desire known to my aunt, a nurse, who advised us to take an HIV test. My husband, my aunt, and I went to the hospital to get the test done. And to my greatest surprise, my husband and I were diagnosed with HIV positive. That was 27 years ago. I was not prepared for the diagnosis, and I was in complete shock. I thought of many things. I saw my desire to have more children dwindle away. I did not stop crying. I just needed to be alone. I was so depressed that I thought of ending my life. I thought of my daughter that I would not see grow up, and a life I could not have in a marriage that was the cause of my illness. But finally, I became aware of the fact that I could live with this disease. Can someone tell me some of the major themes that kind of emerged from P's story? Mm -hmm. Great point. Shock after a positive diagnosis is one thing. Marriage as a risk factor of HIV. And also um, some of the psychosocial stressors that come after a diagnosis, such as depression and suicidal ideation. And it is in Pete's story that we see how psychologists can play a role in the HIV epidemic. And so psychologists can help with primary prevention, such as changing risky sexual behaviors or drug use behaviors that actually decrease the transmission of HIV, as well as secondary prevention efforts, such as helping people live with the infection through therapy and actually coping with what it means to um, have this um, virus now. But in thinking about the risk factors associated with HIV, it's also important to think about what factors help people cope with the diagnosis and actually live um, a healthy and happy life afterwards. And to this, we think about resilience. Can somebody tell me what resilience is? Mm -hmm. Great point. Resilience can be defined as a person's capacity combined with their resources to overcome threats to their developmental health. And psychologists play a large role in cultivating resilience among those diagnosed with HIV. And so psychologists play a role in, in creating interventions that increase um, coping styles that can improve how those with HIV respond to stigma um, HIV or psychology can also help those with HIV um, increase their sense of social support, which can decrease their overall resilience. It helps them re regulate emotions, um, problem solve, and even foster emotional expression. But why is this all important? Can somebody think of why knowing how to foster resilience in the community is important? Great point. It speaks to equity versus equality, which is um, illustrated in this picture. Equality means giving a, a little, the same amount of resources to each group of people, um, and that's equal, that's equality. But in order for us to really overcome some of the disparities we see in um, health disparities that we see, especially HIV AIDS disparities, it's important that we focus on equity. And so how can we utilize the resilience factors in some of these communities 
to actually um, give re more resources to those communities most affected, affected um, in an effort to overcome some of the health crises that we see in these communities. And so instead of giving everybody an equal amount, we give the people who need it the most more resources than others who may not need it as much. And to this end, you all will be split up into groups and we're gonna have a panel discussion in which you all are all psychologists working towards achieving equity in HIV disparities through research and treatment. Each group has been assigned an article and you're gonna first review the article um, and present the article to the class. And then the class will actually ask you questions pertaining to your research expertise area. And you're gonna have to defend why your approach to resolving equity in, or moving towards equity in HIV research and treatment, um, the best approach. All right, we can split now.